Hello, hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to ITU Summer 2021 New Student Orientation. It goes without saying that we are thrilled to have you join ITU today. Uh, during our orientation, if you would, you can turn off your videos, um, and, and I know it's on, the, uh, on your screen right now, but in the chat box, if you would just provide us with the following information, just so we know that you're here, your name, your student ID, your degree program, your ITU student email address, your country of origin, and just a fun fact about you. Um, and also, Later on in the orientation, when we get to your academic department breakout sessions a little bit later, please also put that information in those chat boxes so that your department chairs and the faculty and the students will all know uh, you can all, that's a great way to introduce yourself to each other. Now, we're gonna have a little Q&A session after our presentation today. However, once the orientation's over and the Q&A is over, and if you still have questions, that we didn't cover or that we didn't answer for you, please feel free to email us at orientation at itu.edu. Orientation at itu.edu. One of our moderators will put that email address in the chat for you. Now, um, as a reminder, you should be seeing on your screen now our agenda. So the other thing I'm gonna ask you is if you would please make sure that at all times you have your audio muted, okay? So just a very brief rundown. Our recorded session is about a half an hour. After that, we will introduce you to the ITU Toastmasters Club. Then you're gonna hear from our Student Government Association, also known as SGA. And then our moderators are gonna assign you to your individual degree department sessions. Once the department sessions are over, we will we'll, we'll take a short break. After the break, we're then gonna have a 30 minute session with our president followed by a, a very brief uh, digital photograph, okay? Now, after the photograph, those of you with time commitments, that'll be the time that you can leave because we'll pretty much be done at that point. If you still have questions, please stay for our 30 minute Q&A. And after the Q&A, we're gonna have an open forum discussion with our president, Yao Jin Chan, and I would encourage you if you can, please do it. He really wants to get to know all of you. You absolutely are gonna to wanna to know him. He's very accessible, he, he's a wonderful man. So please think about staying, okay? So having said all of that, let's start with our introduction video. Hello, I'm Yao Jin Chan, President and CEO of International Technological University. And I'm excited to welcome you to the ITU community. Here, we foster the cutting edge skill sets of engineers, business people, coders, digital artists, and other industry leaders by teaching the latest technology emerging from the hottest Silicon Valley companies steering the future of the globe. For those of you who have been following us for a while, you know we've recently gone through many changes as an institution in the last year. Physically, ITU has relocated to 3120 Scott Boulevard, back to our founding roots in Santa Clara City, which has been a long-term goal of mine. The building is a shared space with a venture incubator, a NASA-backed rocket company, and a handful of small startups in a beautiful, spacious, modern building with plenty of room to grow. With the COVID crisis, keeping us all on lockdown, we continue to serve our students via virtual classes delivered through our proprietary educational management system. In terms of new offerings, ITU is introducing exciting and timely new programs such as the Bridge Program, which is designed to help students with non-computer related undergraduate degrees bridge between their non-tech backgrounds to the knowledge base needed to enter an ITU master's degree program in computer science, software engineering, and computer engineering, all hot fields in the Silicon Valley today. We've introduced the ITU Nugget, a short course format which allows industry professionals to introduce a concentrated nugget of trending tech that students from any discipline at ITU are encouraged to take. Whatever's hot and creating jobs in the Valley, we bring it to our students in the Nugget courses and in our ITU Presents course, our version of TED Talks, bringing 
accomplished individuals and pioneers, movers and shakers in the valley to share their personal life experience in an intimate face-to-face -face with our students. We are also offering a slew of new certificate program offerings specifically designed to package three or four IT courses in special topic areas that when completed, quickly update the skill sets of our students to land high paying jobs in the Valley that require specialized high in demand but low in supply technical knowledge sets such as IT security and cybersecurity, which is basically the nursing of, of the technology field, artificial intelligence implementation protocols like TensorFlow and PyTorch, UI UX design, along with many others that are listed on the ITU website. If you're looking for a six-figure salary but need the knowledge boost to get through the door, take a look at IT certificate program offerings. They're listed on the ITU website. And now you will hear from our staff about important ITU departments and changes from finance to academic advising. Hello, I'm Conchi, ITU's online director, and I want to welcome you all to the ITU community. I'm here to talk to you about academic advising. Academic advising is the development of a dynamic relationship between students and advisors. It creates meaningful educational goals in relation to students' interests and future career goals while making the most of their college experience. Is a decision-making relationship in which students seek to maximize their educational potential through communication and information exchange. Academic advisors at ITU strive to provide opportunities and quality professional guidance to all students in order to develop a meaningful, safe and supportive learning atmosphere. We assist our students transition to an academic environment. Together, we identify, clarify, and implement an academic plan for success. This helps students graduate and reach their academic and career goals. The Academic Services Department also services as a liaison between faculty and staff. We assist students with information about degree programs, compliance, integrity, academic regulations and policies, and academic evaluation and assessment. Academic advising also provides students with information regarding graduation, including preliminary graduation checklist, petition to graduate, reducing course load, independent study, degree planning, or what we call your roadmap. Assistance with academic probation, improving study strategies, time management skills, and scholarship information. Students can make appointments to meet with an advisor Monday to Friday by calling the Student Information Center or front desk at the number on your screen. For academic requirements, the course catalog year 2020 to 2021 is going to be your reference. The requirements may change for future students. However, you will follow these requirements unless you decide to change to the new requirements. If you are transferring from another regionally accredited university, you can apply to transfer up to nine credits that will count as selective courses. One internship course is required, and if you take more than one, the rest will count as selective courses. Nine total attended internship credits are allowed. ITU uses a letter grade scale. All earned grades will permanently be on your record. Courses can be repeated for better grades and the new grades credits will count towards your total, but the old letter grades will stay on your records with no credits. A full load is nine credits. Academic probation is when students fall under a three-point cumulative GPA. If you are on academic probation, you are not able to participate in internship, participate or be member of the SGA, and you will not qualify for scholarships. ITU operates on a trimester system. Every trimester is the same and no trimester is optional. Students can finish a degree in three terms. 
if they take 13 credits per term, though all required courses must be taken. F1 students have to be full-time every trimester unless they qualify for annual vacation. After one year of classes, three terms, or have less than nine credits left in their last trimester. Thank you for watching. I will be back again with more internship information and welcome to ITU. Hello, my name is Kent Carson. I'm an advisor in the International Student Office, commonly referred to as ISO. If you want to contact us, you can email us at iso at itu.edu. You can also uh, contact us via support ticket. We also have appointments. Uh, right now, we don't have in-person appointments, but normally we have in-person or Zoom appointments. If you want to make an appointment, you can call the ITU front desk. You can find the phone number on the ITU's website. We also have ISO walk-ins Tuesdays and Thursdays between 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Currently, during COVID-19, we just have appointment slots during those time. Some topics we're going to discuss are full-time course of study, reporting requirements, various international student office documents, and work employment, on-campus and off-campus work employment. This slide is about your I-94. If you go to this website, you can download a copy of your I-94. Every time you re-enter the country, it gets updated, so you should download and print out a copy every single time you enter the U.S. If you're an international student who is just arriving in the U.S. the first time, you should download this copy and email it to ISO. We do need a copy of it. This slide shows your I-20. This is a document that you should be familiar with. It shows information about your program of study and also information about yourself. I want to highlight two areas of importance. One is the program of study. Um, you'll see a code, a CIP code, in the, where, where it says your major. Uh, this major should match what it shows in our student records. Um, so basically, this is what you're studying at ITU. If you think this does not match with what you're studying, then you should email us as soon as possible because this, this uh, area on your I-20 should match what you're studying. If you have any questions about that, just email us at iso.itu.edu. I also want to highlight the program start and end date. Um, for F1 students, you you need to finish your program by the end date that's shown on your I-20. So if you see this end date coming up and you are not close to graduation yet or you don't think you're going to finish graduate, graduating in time, you need to email us as soon as possible because we may need to extend your I-20 and that's very important. So please look at those, uh, especially those two areas on your I-20. And this is the second page of the I-20. It shows CPT authorization, OPT authorization, and also travel endorsements if you ever need to leave the country. For international travel, if you ever need to travel and re-enter the US, you must have a passport that's valid for at least six months, a valid F-1 visa, and also a travel endorsement that's signed on page two of your I-20. If you need to travel, you need to let us know beforehand. There's a form you need to fill out We'll give you all the information you need. Just let us know ahead of time, at least a few weeks in advance, and we'll tell you what you need to bring when you travel. For full-time study, F1 students must be enrolled in a full-time course load. That means nine credits per trimester. Usually that's three courses, but nine credits each trimester is the absolute minimum you need to take as an F1 student. And only one online course is allowed per trimester. If you only have one final class to graduate, it cannot be an online class. And you also must be sure to attend all course sessions because attendance is mandatory. Keep in mind that you are also responsible for keeping accurate records of any work that you complete during your studies. So make sure you keep records of homework or other coursework or tests, uh, any kind of coursework that you take in your classes. This slide is about F1 annual vacation. After three consecutive trimesters of full-time study, if you want to, you can request an annual vacation and we'll see if you qualify for it. Um, you need to be enrolled in three consecutive trimesters of at least nine credits each semester. During the break, annual vacation, you can enroll in part-time classes, so three units or six units. Um, you can also take internship if you wish. You just need to make sure to apply for it, like. Uh, how you usually apply for internship each term. And after the term ends, after the annual vacation ends, you need to be sure to register for the full course load uh, the following trimester. Reporting information. 
So F1 students who have an address change, you need to be sure to report that to us within 10 days. Uh, if you're returning from a break or annual vacation, please let us know at least a month in advance of the coming trimester. If you intend to transfer to another school, you need to let us know as well, because there's a process you need to go, you need to go through. Um, we'll, give, we'll let you know the process, just be sure to give us enough time in advance. And if, if you're graduating in the following term, let us know as well, and we can help you guide you through the process. Uh, these are a list of important documents that you need to be sure to have. Um, I want to emphasize that any I-20s, financial documents, proof of residency, proof, proof of your address, any documents from the government, even syllabi uh, that, you, that you have from your courses, everything that you get from ICU, from the government, you should keep copies, multiple copies of this in your records. It's, it's important um, to keep uh, copies of all these documents for you because you don't know if you'll need them in the future. And we don't always keep copies of things. We keep copies of some things, but we may not have copies if you ask for it years from now. So be sure to keep copies of them for your records. For off-campus work, you must have proper authorization, either CPT or OPT. OPT is after graduation. CPT is internship while you're attending school. Working illegally is a non reinstable offense. You must have proper authorization and work must be in your field of study. If you ever do on-campus jobs, we do have some on-campus jobs for student assistance, but there's a maximum of 20 hours per week that you can work for those on-campus jobs. For internships, all internships fall between the dates of the term. You cannot engage an internship off-campus without the proper CPT authorization, which is shown on your I-20. The work date is shown on your I-20, and you cannot work without the I-20. Um, do not engage in an internship beyond the CPT end date as shown on the I-20. And also do not begin an internship without first receiving that authorization. And obviously submitting fake documents can result in suspension or expulsion from ITU. Thank you for your time. ISO will also be emailing you your I-20s very shortly. So please be sure to check your student email address regularly um, for any updates as well as for your uh, copies of your I-20s as well. Currently, I'm also helping in the Registrar's Office. The Registrar's Office handles issues related to student academic records, class registration, and conferring degrees, among many other things. If you ever have issues or questions related to class registration, adding or dropping classes, or information about your student record, you can contact us. Due to COVID-19 right now, we don't have student walk-ins or appointment slots, but you can reach out to us through email, which is registrar at itu.edu. You can also submit a support ticket via our school support ticket system, Freshdesk. I look forward to hearing from you. Hello, new student. Uh, I hope you're doing fine. First of all, I would like to say, I hope you all are safe and healthy during this time. I'm going to talk about the accounting, introducing the accounting, what you need to know, the most important about the accounting department. First of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, it's my name is Dr. Amal Mugarbil. I am uh, the uh, chief financial uh, officer and you may later on uh, uh, during your study uh, you may receive many emails from our department and if you have any question any specific things you like to address it to me you may email me or you may come to the office when we open again when you enroll in any classes you need of course to make payment and also there are non-refundable fees which are registration fee technology fee vta sga and if you need health care uh, uh, you know, coverage. Also, there is a charge for the ha for the health care, and uh, uh, you know, so those are non-refundable except the health care and also the SGA. Those two, uh, those two fees. If you uh, drop from the university, or if you have like for the insurance, if you have uh, insurance uh, uh, coverage from somewhere or from your uh, employer, or uh, you know, so then you you can waive them. Uh, also, there is a, we can offer discount uh, fees, and the discount we call it scholarship, 
and this is only applied to California resident, citizen, U.S. citizen, and also California resident H-1B holders. Uh, if you have uh, F-1 visa, you, you are not eligible for the scholarship. Even if you don't have uh, F-1, and but you, you don't have a green card, citizen, uh, 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 American passport, or uh, if you, don't, you are not on H-1, you are also not eligible for the discount. All students who, who are alumni, they are also eligible for the 25% discount. So when you, uh, when you enroll in your classes, e you either contact us directly so we can apply the discount to your account, or you may enroll and later on we, we are going to reverse the 25% from your tuition. At the end, if you pay all tuition, your balance will be zero. And uh, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, if you enroll then, you have, if you don't get the 25% at the beginning, that's mean you need to pay all the amount. Uh, if you have a specific, you, want, you don't want to pay the whole amount, contact uh, accounting so we can calculate how much you need to pay and then later on we reverse the, uh, the amount. Make sure you provide proof of your eligibility, such as copy of your green card, copy of your passport or H-1B and also we can check for H-1B holders, we can check with ISO department, International uh, Student Office uh, Department to make sure you are you have the H-1B. If you have health care coverage, you are eligible to waive it. How do you waive the health care? At the time of enrollment, we send a company called GCB and this company, uh, that company that provide the health care coverage and uh, uh, to all the students uh, log in to their portal. And when you see your name enrolled, you need to, the, uh, you know, then you need to waive it. We accounting department cannot waive your uh, health care insurance. You need by yourself waive it. And that time there is, uh, you know, there is a deadline to waiving and if you have insurance, you need to send uh, accounting copy of your insurance and also waive your insurance directly. If you don't waive it by the deadline, you will be charged $673.65 because that's mean if you don't waive it and we don't waive for you any, any uh, that insurance, that means university will pay, and of course, uh, uh, we don't want you to pay if you have it, and you don't want us to pay it also if you are eligible to waive it. So please ma make sure you waive your insurance. To make payment, there are a few options. You can do it through my itu.edu, and you can find that when you register. Starting uh, the summer, we uh, itu is uh, charging 3% uh, on all online payment. If you are paying by credit card, debit card, or e-check, and also there is another way to to do that payment, which is like a flywire. It's uh, you know we transfer money. Some student they pay through flywire, like also PayPal and uh, uh, American Express. Also we accept, and that go directly to our bank. There is a deadline for uh, the the payment. Uh, when you enroll in your classes, you have to pay directly uh, all, the pay, all the fees and all the courses, to pay all the tuition. And there is an add and drop period. You need to check our website to know what is the deadline for adding and drop. Of course, when you drop your courses, you are eligible to have 100% refund of your tuition regarding the classes, the courses but not not refundable fees and also there is six hundred dollar deposit at the beginning when you start also this is not refundable some students they prefer to pay by installment plan other they pay everything you know in advance and if you if you prefer to pay installment plan there is a hundred dollar installment fee which is also not refundable you are responsible to pay directly 2100 for one course plus all other fee such as again the technology the uh, uh, health care if you want health care coverage and also the registration fee SGA and VTA all those fees are uh, you know due and that at the time of the registration if you enroll for less than three courses 
you are not eligible for installment plan. Installment plan is only available for students who are full-time students. Installment plan and also promissory note for your credit. You can send your credit card information later when we open the office so we can uh, use this information when we charge you on your credit card. Uh, then in this case, uh, you, can, you can ask directly uh, accounting. We can send you a copy of those forms. At the end of the year, students are eligible to to file taxes and as a student you are eligible to, fi to file 1098T and what what we need to help you file this by December 31st you send to ITU either by mail or by fax uh, or uh, you can come to the office and drop W9S the W9S is very important to file your 1098T because it has your personal information, such as SSN, Social Security Number, and also it has uh, your, your current address. It's very important to provide your current address. If we don't have your current address or if you made mistake in your current address, you will not receive the 1098 because 1098 will be mailed to you by mail or by email. So, but, uh, but the most important is, is by mail. So we need to have those information. And then on January, we start processing the 1098. So you expect to have your 1098 before, before February to make sure if you wanna uh, file your taxes in February or after. You can find information about uh, 1098 uh, and also the W9 in the website, on the, our website. Keep in mind that your 1098, you don't receive it from the accounting department. We only send it for processing. Uh, we need to receive your W9S in, in, by December, by the end of December. And we send this information to the third party who prepare your 1098. Once it's submitted, it takes like about a week to process it and then uh, we review that information and then you will receive your 1098 by mail or electronically. So, uh, so those are the main important information now I would like to share with you and let you know about them. If you have any question again, you may email directly to uh, accounting office and thank you and I, I wish you good luck and uh, I hope to see you soon later on. Once you're enrolled in our courses, you'll get access to our educational management system or EMS. You can access it at ems.itu.edu. All of your courses will be listed on your student's dashboard and you can access the course by clicking his name. Inside each course, you will see tabs to access an activity feed with announcements, your course syllabus, coursework that may include assignments, lessons, discussions, and quizzes, course resources, and your gradebook. If you need to reach out to your instructor, you can find their email address in the syllabus. If you have a technical problem with the EMS, click support at the top of the page to go to our Freshdesk support website, itlservice.freshdesk.com. Click new support ticket to create a ticket describing your issue. Assign the ticket to the technical support group. You can also use the support system to submit tickets to other departments at ITU. Just select the department from the group list. If you are not sure which group to choose, you can select general and our information center will assign your ticket appropriately. Remember to bookmark ems.itu.edu for EMS and ituservicefreshtest.com for support. Toastmasters and public speaking is a necessary skill for anybody you have to be able to speak because unless you speak and people take notice of what you say, you're not going to be taken seriously. In a team group meeting, you, you want to make sure that you're saying something in a way that is interesting to people, perhaps is motivating to them, uh, gets the point across, but doesn't go on too long. There's no better way to have the adrenaline running and see if your memory works, um, create something that is inspiring and interesting to you that for the most part is usually interesting to the audience. There are several different roles that a Toastmaster can take. 
These can be the president, they can be three VP roles, whether there's a VP of education, a VP of public relations, a VP of membership, for example. Then there are other administrative roles. So you have the secretary, the treasurer, a sergeant at arms, which is kind of like the logistics manager. This is like a little family. It is just a little thing that helps them connect with other people, network not just with faculty and other students, but also members of our community around here. I know I'm going to have this really interesting story at the beginning. I'm going to have three points that I remind the audience about, and then I tell an interesting anecdote about some problem that I have, and I wrap it up with this uh, nice ending that's thought provoking. We practice things like impromptu speaking, we practice leadership skills like negotiation, persuasion, bargaining. Toastmasters helps you on the job for interviews as a student giving your presentations or even if you're part of a venture capital type situation where you're asking for funding for a startup venture and they get honest, constructive feedback. Now just imagine the value of that. Everybody gets their work done by talking. So at work, people are going to make immediate assessments of your intelligence, your worth, your you know the quality of your ideas by the first minute or less of what it is that you have to say. Toastmasters is a great skill, no matter if you're speaking with one person or you're speaking with a thousand. I think Toastmasters is a great thing to have. Hands-on experience and skill development are key components of ITU's pedagogy. We recognize how important internships are in transferring course theory, concepts, and skills from a graduate program to a career in your field of study. For this reason, we are committed to linking the classroom with relevant industry experience. As affirmed by the university's Academic Leadership Council, ITU requires students to participate in an internship, one credit hour required for graduation. Although only one credit is required for master's degree seeking students, students can participate in a maximum of nine credit hours per degree as a core part of the curriculum for all of ITU's master's degree programs. Attempted credits, even if failed, will count under the nine credits. All internship requests must follow the same procedure. Students who do not follow the procedure may see their internship request delayed or denied. Students cannot begin an internship until all parts of the procedure have been completed. Students on an F-1 visa must not begin an internship until they receive a CPT I-20. The first required document is your internship offer letter. You must obtain a signed offer letter for an internship provider on the company letterhead. The letter must include 1. Date 2. A student's name and ID number 3. E-Verify or EIN number 4. Internship title 5. Internship provider name or company 6. A start and end date, beginning and end of term, internship cannot be between terms. 7. Name, title, and email of supervisor. 8. Whether is paid or unpaid. 9. Your student degree program. 10. Goals and objectives. 11. Supplemental statement. Verify that intern not replacing an employee or fill a vacant position. 12. Authorize representative, CEO, HR, or supervisor. The second required document is your internship application. It must be complete and accurate to match offer letter. The third and final required document is the cooperative agreement. It must be complete and accurate to match offer letter and application. Incomplete application or applications with wrong information will be denied internship. All applications need to be submitted through the internship application link. No internship will be accepted via email unless approved by the internship coordinator. The internship coordinator can be reached at internships at itu.edu. Thanks again and we look forward to seeing you in class. As Nelson Mandela said, 
Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And I couldn't agree with him more. Please stay safe during this new normal time. Practice self-care, rinse with Listerine, and remember that educating yourself during this time is one of the best investments you can make for your family and for your future. Thank you. Hello again. So you heard a little bit about IQ Toastmasters and we would encourage you to take advantage of the Toastmasters Club. It will help you build your leadership and your communication skills. It also allows you to, to work with the fellow ITU students, faculty, Bay Area companies, and it is a great, great way for you to engage in the ITU community while having some fun. So now to tell you a little bit more about the ITU Toastmasters are our two, mentor, two of our mentors that you saw in the video, Dr. Patty Wigan and Newton Bott. I'm Patty Wigan. Thanks, everyone. Welcome to our orientation meeting today, and uh, welcome to ITU. I have been the mentor, as Bill mentioned, for the ITU Toastmasters Club. We started the club in 2015, and currently we have a mix of students and non-students. So we welcome our students to join the club, and I believe the uh, information for who to contact is on this slide. But with each meeting, which, are, which uh, the meetings are held virtually, by the way, over Zoom every Thursday night, and with each meeting, you'll see it. Uh, various skills being demonstrated and you get to practice various skills. There are pathways that you can join that will teach you how to make prepared speeches. And uh, the other thing is every single meeting, we have something called table topics where you get to do spontaneous teaching. Uh, excuse me, um, speaking. So within the Toastmasters program, there are people who have various skills of delivery and have been Toastmasters for a while. You may find someone that you can identify as a mentor within the club to help you develop. But besides just communication, you get skills in leadership. You can lead meetings, you can give feedback. And with every single meeting, someone gives you not only positive, but also constructive criticism on your speech, which is kind, but also to the point, which helps you to learn and uh, motivates you to continue teaching, uh, speaking as uh, Toastmasters. So I'm gonna turn it over to Newton now. She can give us a little more of her perspective on Toastmasters. Again, welcome to ITU. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for that, Patty, and welcome to every single one of you uh, to our summer 2021 new student orientation. Um, as Patty mentioned, uh, feedback is one of the most critical things that you can take back and also the art of uh, speaking spontaneously. Um, apart from that, imagine the value of actually developing your leadership um, skills within a practice environment in a non-judgmental environment. Uh, to me, that was my particular highlight of uh, my Toastmasters journey. Um, I also got to practice being a, as an area director uh, for a variety of different uh, clubs, including ITU Toastmasters. And that was just absolutely an amazing, amazing practice module for me. Um, I would encourage every one of you, whether it is for your presentations in class or whether it's uh, maybe there's an upcoming interview that you want to be a part of, or there is uh, you know, a venture capital type situation that you're in, um, no matter what the situation is, you can find immense value by being a Toastmaster. Come, check out a meeting um, with no strings attached. Uh, we would love to see you if you need more information. Uh, please take a picture of the screen or of the slide that's currently showing on your computer and uh, you should be able to contact us. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of New Student Orientation today. Back to you, Bill. Thank you, Dr. Wigan and Newton. Uh, as you can tell, the Toastmasters Club, it's an excellent opportunity. So please consider taking advantage of it. So now, we're gonna to go to the SGA live presentation, the Student Government Association, and I would like to introduce to you, Grace. Grace, take it away. Thank you, Bill. First of all, I'd like to congratulate and welcome everyone to this uh, student orientation. So uh, my name is Grace. I am the Student Government Association representative or SGA. So the motto of SGA is of the students, by the students, and for the students. It promotes student participation. It 
<laughs> provides solution to various issues. It provides positive development of an individual and creates a good and brighter vision for our current and prospective students. Next slide, please. It also um, gives an active participation in school activities, provides safe and enjoyable learning environment, helps in fundraising activities to, to raise money, and has a lot of uh, projects and activities that we can submit for final recommendation to ensure a better life for our students. So what is SGA all about? SGA gives the students an opportunity to govern themselves and to assist in the governing of the school in a democratic manner under their own leadership. Next slide, please. As you can see in this uh, slide, you can see the chart of the SGA. Um, I am here as a student representative and our advisors are Jake Poctel, Patty Wigan, Newton Bat, and also Eric Palma. So as you can see, also in the chart, there are a lot of open positions. Thank you. So if you want to join us, um, you can email us at sga at itu.edu to be able to be part of our student government association. So we have a lot of activities. And if you participate in one of them, you can be one of these uh, two ladies here who receive some items for their active participation in SGA-related activities. One of our projects is the We Hear You program. Uh, I'd like you to take advantage by adding yourself in our WhatsApp chat group. You can just scan the QR code on the side to be able to assist you and guide you with your different student issues. These are the official ITU web, uh, what's, web WhatsApp of ITU. Another project that we do is the Career Hub, in which we have a lot of uh, speakers who are experienced both in soft skill and technical speak and technology, that they share the experiences to our students. And they are also alumni, so you can really network and be mentored by them. So for spring, we have three episodes, uh, data science, ID, ID recruitment and placement and machine learning. And moving forward, if you have suggestions for speakers or topics that you want to be in our career hub, um, just email us again at sga at itu.edu. So yeah, this is just one of the, these are just, uh, uh, the fun activities that we do in our club. So right now, because of the pandemic, we do our meetings virtually, um, but before we used to have it in the campus. These are just SGA related links and the two uh, links below are the recordings for our um, Career Hub episodes that I want you to can check it out in um, ITU Silicon Valley YouTube account. So we'd like to welcome you again for this orientation. Um, become part of SGA. As for more information, you can send us an email at sga at itu.edu. Um, our next meeting will be on May 18, Tuesday at 5 p.m. So we'll be sending email invitations for you. This is using Google Meet. So thank you very much and back to you, Bill. Thank you, Grace. That was wonderful, thank you. Um, we encourage all of you to participate in SGA. It is such a worthwhile thing. So now we're gonna start assigning all of you to your degree department breakout rooms. Now, if you get into your uh, academic breakout room and it is the wrong room, please leave immediately and come back to the main room and we will make sure that we get you assigned to the correct room. Hopefully that won't happen, but just in case, come back and we'll take care of it. Now at the end of the session, at the end of the breakout sessions, you will automatically be brought back to this main session where we'll have a 15 minute break. And then we'll continue our program at around noon. And uh, so I hope that you enjoy your time with your department chair, your faculty, member, your fellow classmates, and we'll see you in a little while.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the time with your department chairs and your fellow classmates. So welcome back. Now, um, to continue with the next section of today's orientation, it is my honor to introduce to all of you the president of ITU, Yao Jin Chan. President Chan. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Yao Jane Chan, or uh, you guys, please just call me Yao. And uh, I'm the president and CEO of ITU. Uh, I've been at ITU myself uh, 22 years. I started in the year 2000. And the university was founded by my father, Dr. Shu Park Chan. Uh, and uh, it has a very special uh, vision and mission uh, which we've we've carried on uh, for uh, almost three decades now. So I wanted to uh, speak today and, and give you all a kind of a, a, a uh, overview of the uh, master's degree uh, in the curriculum that has been designed uh, especially uh, for those who are interested in high technology, specifically merging trending technologies in the Silicon Valley. Okay, so if you can take a look at your, your screen. Uh, the master's program, we introduced uh, what we call a nugget uh, about uh, two terms ago. And what a nugget is, is a condensed version of our typical master's class. A typical master's class consists of uh, three units, uh, three master's units. And uh, typically one unit is the equivalent to 15 lecture hours. So, uh, you know, if you do your math, then three units is uh, 45 hours of uh, lecture per class. Uh, what is different about the nugget structure is that we have uh, condensed uh, the nuggets to be as small unit. So one unit being uh, uh, 15 hours of lecture one third of a unit would be uh, five hours of lecture. That means the smallest nugget uh, course that you can enroll in that could be offered at ITU is a five hour uh, lecture uh, course. Now, why have we done that? Uh, this uh, structure was inspired uh, particularly because uh, our students uh, get uh, very high in demand, uh, high paying, but uh, uh, low in supply jobs, meaning that uh, there are a lot of job vacancies uh, for these positions. That's how we, we train you guys to be able to land jobs like that. Uh, so we find a lot of our students uh, first year out, they're working for the top companies in the most trending areas, say uh, Nvidia, uh, Google, um, uh, Twitter, uh, whatnot. So, when we looked at our graduating class, um, it came to mind that why, why don't we have our current students be, be able to benefit uh, from our most recent graduates? Because uh, once our graduates go out into the workforce and they're working in these trending technologies that are uh, really cutting uh, the new cloth uh, for technology globally, uh, they represent uh, the latest of what is evolving in the Silicon Valley. And so uh, I, we didn't want to wait, you know, 10, 5, 10, 15 years uh, to be able to pull these people back and, uh, and then have our alumni teach our students. Uh, so we thought of a structure that uh, uh, we could immediately introduce uh, the newest and latest of technology uh, directly right back into uh, our curriculum to benefit our current students. Uh, so uh, even if uh, uh, what is new in uh, the industry uh, does not warrant say 45 lecture hours, well, if it's just five hours or even if uh, uh, our alumni or uh, uh, the latest uh, 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 trend maker, pioneer in the Silicon Valley can't afford to spend uh, the time to prepare a, an entire 45 uh, lecture hour course, uh, we could still, you know, uh, twist their arm and, uh, uh, you know, compel them uh, to come back and contribute at least uh, five, uh, 10 lecture hours 
so that uh, you, our students, could immediately benefit uh, from the latest and cutting edge. And, and that's what the nuggets are really there for. So um, I, I'm going to, okay, well, uh, well here you have a, a list of the, of the nugget courses. Um, uh, you know, introduction to digital uh, sculpting using uh, ZBrush, uh, visionary architecture um, taught by Dr. Stefan Al, a world famous uh, architect and landscape uh, architecture uh, artist uh, who you'll be seeing a video of uh, 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 shortly. Uh, sustainable buildings and cities. Um, these are like smart city uh, designs uh, that are, are at the cutting edge around the world that take into consideration global warming and uh, whatnot. Uh, and uh, this, there's a video uh, coming up that will also feature Dr. Stefan Al uh, to uh, talk about that. Uh, digital design and manufacturing also by Dr. Stefan Al. Game programming, uh, Unity Sprite Kit using C Sharp and Swift. Python applications, advanced JavaScript, uh, future of work, uh, blockchain, and peer-to-peer -peer software. Hello, everyone. I'm Stefan Elm. I'm a Dutch architect based in New York City, and I'm so excited to be here today with you. I absolutely admire ITU for being an extremely innovative and tech-savvy um, educator based in Silicon Valley and leading and educating the new generation of people who are going to be change makers uh, in the tech world. Uh, so I'm, I'm very thrilled to be uh, teaching three small nugget courses at ITU this semester. Uh, before I get into which, what these courses are, let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, so I was trained as an architect and uh, one of my uh, very early projects was uh, winning the competition and the design commission for the Canton Tower, which is a TV tower in Guangzhou, which at the time was the world's tallest tower. And um, on top of that, I worked for um, several clients uh, and several firms working on extremely large scale projects, including this project. Uh, for a tech campus, as well as uh, this project uh, in Batam for a sustainable resort. On top of that, I also like to work in the small scale, uh, for instance, this uh, small pavilion for Burning Man. But what really combines it all together is a little interest in creating you know, digitally sophisticated and sustainable buildings that can create great experiences for everyone. On top of that, I published several books uh, related to architecture and urban design, uh, and I'm going to be teaching about these topics at ITU. So just to summarize what these three small nugget courses are, which I'm going to teach, one is called Visionary Architecture, and it's a um, overview of what I think are the most interesting and most visionary architecture groups and architects of recent history. And it goes back to proposals dating back to 100 years ago, and some of that, that may not have been built, but nevertheless, that have been incredibly influential and have inspired the architects of today. On top of that, I will look at some of the new challenges that are facing architecture um, and how uh, architects and designers are responding uh, to those challenges with new innovative uh, ways of doing design, including this project, which you may know, um, the, the new Apple campus by Norman Foster. The second nugget course is around sustainable buildings and cities. And for those of you who don't know, actually the built environment uh, is very much responsible for uh, carbon emissions. About 40% of the global CO2 stems from carbon emissions. So what can we do to reduce that? Well, lots of interesting buildings covered in greenery, entire green cities are taking charge, including this project here in Singapore, uh, which now has covered almost its entire city in greenery to fight uh, climate change. So this is just one of the many examples that I'll, I'll talk about but I'll mention all the principles that 
uh, we as, as designers um, or architects or urban planners or, or anyone interested in the built environment can utilize to create uh, a better planet. And then finally, I'll be talking about digital design and manufacturing. The built environment is being revolutionized by people like you who are interested in technology. Uh, there's new ways of doing design. There's always new, also new ways of manufacturing. Uh, and we'll be doing some hands-on work. I'm going to be teaching you a software called Rhino and Grasshopper, in which you can do scripting, visual scripting, and create very complex ge uh, geometries, uh, which we then can later try to build with a 3D printer, CNC millers, and other types of uh, machinery. So those are some of the things we're gonna be discussing and obviously much more. I'm very excited to do that with you uh, this semester. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And, and once again, uh, thank you for this opportunity and I look forward to meeting you in person. Bye. Okay, great. Um, uh, so you, you'll see you have uh, three core courses. So e each uh, uh, standard course is uh, three units long. Uh, so you have uh, three core courses, and these are the courses uh, that the uh, department heads uh, in your field uh, uh, with uh, uh, advisement uh, from industry professionals have uh, deemed uh, the fundamental uh, knowledge that you will have that uh, no matter if you're in the industry for the next three decades, five decades, uh, you will still uh, you utilize these uh, core uh, uh, philosophical or theor theoretical principles uh, that drives uh, that field. So uh, the core is filled with that. Uh, within the core uh, of every field, uh, there is an overview of the entire span of the field. Uh, now, we've found uh, over the years uh, that this is a, a, a critical thing for our students in terms of uh, longevity in the field. Um, I will give you an example. So uh, even at uh, top universities, Berkeley, uh, UCLA, where I did my undergraduate and graduate work, Santa Clara University, where my, my father was the Dean of the Engineering School. Uh, what we found about uh, graduates, you know, for, exa for example, my father was uh, a specialist in uh, electrical engineering. Uh, so in electrical engineering, let's say you are um, a, a, a digital uh, design uh, specialist. Uh, well, you know, if that field, um, if that area, that topic uh, goes down and there are not so many uh, digital uh, designers uh, necessary, uh, that person may not know what their skills uh, have to do with, say, uh, uh, RFIC uh, chip uh, uh, design. Uh, they may not know uh, what uh, their skill sets have to do with uh, EDA tools. Uh, so if they lose their job, for example, you know, uh, five, 10, 15 years uh, into their career, they don't know how to reposition themselves. Uh, that will not be the case uh, for you all. Uh, and that is because uh, at ITU, we make sure that you have a, a, a 10,000 foot uh, level uh, overview of the entire field. So you know uh, what one thing has to do with another. You see how the different competencies uh, that are career paths in your field relate to one, one another. Uh, so that if things involved in the field and uh, for example, uh, your, your, your particular uh, job is uh, uh, no longer a hot, uh, you will know how to uh, move on to a, another career within the same field. Okay, so that's that's the core. Uh, now at ITU, what is the the most special thing about our delivery uh, uh, in terms of content to our students uh, is through our instructors. Uh, unlike most uh, uh, traditional uh, top universities. Uh, ITU does not have tenure. And uh, tenure means that uh, uh, the professor, once they have attained uh, tenure, cannot be fired. 
So most, most all uh, top universities have tenure, uh, but uh, as my father used to say, tenure is the death knell for curriculum innovation. So uh, when he created ITU, uh, he, uh, he had a standing order that uh, tenure would not be uh, made at ITU. Uh, so instead, uh, probably the vast number, maybe 90% of all of your courses will be taught by people with PhDs in uh, top universities, but they will be working professionals uh, in the Silicon Valley uh, coming to us uh, from NVIDIA, from, uh, from, uh, from Apple, uh, from uh, AMD, uh, from all of these uh, cutting edge uh, uh, technology companies. So that's why we increased uh, the electives uh, to five courses. So you, you have uh, 15 credit units uh, that uh, you're required uh, to, to take in the electives. And the way we form electives is we find out what is uh, what are uh, the most trending uh, uh, technologies that uh, the top uh, high tech companies are hiring for. Uh, and then we bring that technology right into ITU. And that's what um, uh, the electives are about. And uh, of course, uh, one thing that ITU was founded on uh, was the principle uh, that uh, academic learning is uh, fully enhanced uh, with uh, practical application. So at ITU, part of your learning, uh, uh, we require you to have an internship. Uh, and in the internship, uh, while you're in the workplace, uh, applying uh, your, your knowledge sets that you learn at ITU, uh, it becomes much more relevant what you're learning and uh, to the project that you're working on at work. And likewise, uh, the work demands uh, that you face uh, in the workplace uh, then allow you to appreciate what you are absorbing and mo motivate you to absorb uh, what is in the academics. Okay, the capstone is uh, very, very near the very end of your tenure at ITU. Um, you will be required to do a capstone project. The capstone project uh, will be led uh, by uh, one of two uh, presently uh, amazing uh, professors, uh, uh, one sitting next to me uh, here, Dr. Uh, George Tanos, as well as our uh, CTO, uh, uh, Dr. Mamoun Samaha, uh, who is also here today. And in the capstone, uh, you will be paired, you, you, you can choose or we can help you pair uh, with uh, uh, two or three or, or more uh, I, fellow ITU uh, students uh, and we we uh, heavily suggest and encourage uh, that your group be cross-disciplinary. In other words, we don't want all the uh, computer scientists all in one group. Uh, we want the digital art uh, artist in, in in there. We want a business in there, a business major in there. We want an engineering management person in there, and then we'll also have a software person in there. Uh, so that way, uh, we encourage uh, a cross-disciplinary. Uh, teamwork amongst you. So uh, that's that's what the capstone is about. And uh, usually you'll be working on a real uh, life uh, project uh, either assigned to you or if you guys have interest and you bring one up that is accepted uh, by your mentor professor, uh, then you guys will be working on that for about four months together. And uh, uh, we have had amazing projects uh, that have come out uh, from our students. Uh, I, I myself have seen uh, them be able to, uh, from conceptualization all the way to the end of the four months, uh, I'll see them have put up a website, create an app, uh, have an entire business structure that is, uh, and business plan that is uh, ready uh, to uh, go out and uh, uh, go ask for, asking for a funding. Uh, so the caps Stone is uh, also a, uh, a very uh, real project that uh, you'll be able to show uh, 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 your prospective employers when you walk out of ITU. ITU Presents is, uh, was started by my father uh, in what he called, used to call joint seminar. And uh, this course is where uh, we invite a, a noted pioneer in technology and noted entrepreneur 
uh, a, a basically a famous person who, who has uh, some uh, cap a, a lot of capability to come speak to our students for an hour, hour and a half. And then afterwards, um, the students can uh, ask direct questions. So this is something I, I wanted to stress uh, to our students is that uh, with all ITU event, events, including uh, this, this orientation, uh, there is a start time and there is an official uh, uh, stop time uh, where nothing is more required uh, from, from the student. Uh, but unofficially, because we're an educational institution and we, uh, we really uh, want to nurture an environment that is very uh, open armed, uh, unofficially our events uh, last until uh, they naturally uh, uh, come to their own end. So a lot of times in, uh, for example, the ITU presents, uh, we have these uh, very amazing uh, pioneering uh, people who come in and uh, they're very hard to reach uh, normally, but because they have agreed to do the ITU presents, a lot of times uh, they're in a different mind state and they're very much ready to share. They want to give uh, to the student and so uh, we encourage our students to, uh, as long as the speaker uh, or the president or uh, any uh, professor is willing to uh, stay, uh, we encourage you to reach out, uh, to ask whatever questions and to uh, uh, talk about yourselves and uh, pull uh, for more information uh, and wisdom uh, from the people who uh, are here to uh, make your, your uh, your future is better. Uh, okay, so that's that's about uh, the summary of, of the overall curriculum. Uh, the reason why I take the time to describe the entire uh, uh, crafting of this curriculum uh, to you, and it's true amongst every single field, uh, no matter you're in digital arts, business, uh, or engineering, uh, is because we put a lot of thought into it, and uh, we have looked at our structure uh, compared uh, to all the other uh, top schools. And we've looked at our particular um, uh, highlight points, you know, our, our particular strengths. And uh, what, we're, what we're seeing more and more is that the nugget structure uh, that was just introduced uh, two uh, terms ago uh, is uh, uh, finding its place and uh, I'm hearing a lot of feedback, even, even uh, this week, I've been hearing a lot of feedback from our, uh, our academic heads that they would like to uh, extend the nugget structure to include uh, uh, more uh, credit units. So uh, right now we have uh, uh, two nuggets uh, and uh, one I2 presents uh, in, in the nugget structure, uh, but we may very well be extending uh, the three units uh, all the way up to uh, nine units. So uh, kind of keep your, your uh, ears uh, peeled and uh, you may hear uh, more about that uh, in the very near future. Uh, we, we believe in the Nugget uh, courses. Uh, they, uh, they represent a lot of excitement and they are there to stimulate uh, cross-disciplinary uh, uh, act activity and teamwork amongst our students. Uh, you know, while you're here at ITU, you will find, uh, you know, once you graduate, ITU becomes your alma mater. And all the graduates, uh, all the alumni who have ever come to I ITU, which, which there are thousands now, they become your uh, fellow alumnus and uh, they become your contacts and they become the people uh, that you rely upon when uh, you need uh, help in your own industry or uh, if you start do a startup or you need uh, to hire uh, uh, competent people, uh, uh, these people become your, your network, your career network uh, uh, to strengthen your own goals while you make your way through your own career. So uh, take advantage of that. You know, um, ITU is a special place and our students and as well as our alumni are very special people. Okay, so IT presents, I, I kind of uh, already described to you, this is our TED Talks, and uh, you're required to, I think, uh, go to uh, uh, several of them uh, every term. 
Okay, and then these are uh, some of the ITU presents that are coming up. Uh, you know, personal brand management, how to shine in your work, my journey into the tech industry uh, by Lucy Mangus, and then a, a couple of other uh, nuggets uh, and, and topics. Um, it's a uh, very interesting uh, things like uh, storytelling. Uh, it's worth mentioning uh, that we do it in digital arts. We have a, a storyboard class. And uh, even if you're not a digital artist, uh, let's say you're just a, a business person or you're an engineer, uh, if it's, a, if it's a, in a nugget form and uh, you would like to take it, I, I really suggest that you do because uh, a lot of times in technology, what we found is it's not just the person who understands technology and has mastered the technology the best that gets promoted. It's the person who can communicate it, uh, the person who can uh, tell a, a, a better story, uh, the person who can co-opt others uh, to uh, follow uh, their vision. Uh, so the ability to communicate these uh, soft skills or EQ skills are actually uh, in industry, they're more important uh, than the technological skills that you, you may have. So uh, keep that in mind, especially if you guys are kind of like a, a nerdy and kind of uh, introverted and with, uh, withdrawn. Uh, if you wanna become a manager uh, of other people, uh, it necessitates that you're able to articulate and uh, you're able to communicate. Uh, so these skills are very important and uh, we do our best to uh, uh, put exercises throughout your uh, curriculum uh, to kind of force you or give you opportunity uh, to make presentations uh, and to get over uh, any kind of uh, uh, speaking uh, fright. Uh, but uh, I encourage all of you uh, to focus on that for yourselves because like I said, uh, and I say one more time, uh, it's more important that you have good communication skills than you have uh, technological skills. Uh, that is what really gets you ahead uh, in uh, the workplace. Okay, I've talked about the uh, capstone course series and uh, uh, both uh, Dr. Tenos and uh, uh, Dr. Samaha are both here today. Uh, so if you have any questions afterwards, like I said, uh, informally, uh, this session will uh, continue uh, until uh, you, you our, our very precious students, are exhausted uh, from talking to us. Uh, so you are free to uh, uh, talk to Dr. Tanos and uh, Dr. Samaha and myself uh, as long as you would like. Um, okay, uh, one last thing, because I think this is my last slide, is uh, <clears throat> I can tell you that at ITU in the 22 years that I've worked here, uh, this is the absolute best staff that I have uh, worked with uh, in my tenure. And, uh, and in terms of our faculty, uh, I, I would like to say this is uh, the best faculty we've ever had. But the truth is, uh, for some reason uh, that I, I, I believe my father was able to set up, the culture at ITU has always uh, uh, before I even came, attracted the best in industry. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, what, whenever I go out and I start talking to people in the Silicon Valley or around the globe uh, regarding what is the cutting edge technology that's leading the globe right now today, uh, when I hear it and uh, I take some notes and then I come home and I start asking around, hey, uh, who, who can we find uh, who uh, has no, good knowledge in this new cutting edge area? Uh, I invariably, uh, without exception, it, it, that person I will find, they'll say, oh, oh, well, just ask Tom. I say, oh, okay, uh, you mean Tom, you're our instructor, Tom. Yes, okay. Uh, so Tom can lead me to the person who's kind of the top pioneer in the industry and goes, no, Tom is the top pioneer in the industry. And this has happened to me so many times as I've gone through this kind of exercise that I can conf confidently say, whatever is the cutting edge in technology right now today, uh, if you find out what that is and you come check, you'll find that that person is affiliated with ITU already and you 
you very likely can take a class from that person. So uh, we, we, we just, we have the best technologists at ITU uh, and that that's just the, uh, the fact and it's been proven over, over time. So our, you, our students are very lucky to have that. Um, I can also tell you as, uh, you know, as a, a manager or administrator at ITU, especially with COVID, I've been uh, invited to a, a lot of the operational uh, meetings that uh, normally uh, I, 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 I wouldn't, uh, you know, have the ability to maybe uh, get to. Uh, so sometimes I'll just drop in uh, to some uh, operational meetings and with all humans, you know, you, you will have conflict. So I'll see conflict amongst our, my staff uh, sometimes. And I just sit back and I listen. I, I don't often uh, uh, kind of uh, put myself in the middle. Uh, but I, I, as a manager, I'll kind of uh, take kind of a self-reflecting look and I say, okay, what, what's motivating this person who's arguing so passionately against this other person who's arguing so passionately? And uh, when I when I drill down on the motivations, both sides are looking out for the best interest of the student, of our students, of, for you. Uh, so I can tell you that um, uh, you know, even every argument and conflict that we have within the walls of ITU, uh, within the staff of ITU, uh, uh, our, our motivating factor is to serve our students, uh, our students, uh, uh, best interest and our students' future. Uh, so, you know, you have a, a team of people up and down uh, and, uh, and a team of instructors uh, who are just uh, first rate and giving you the best. Um, all of us, all of the people that I have seen and come into contact with at ITU, they give more uh, than uh, what uh, simply they're paid for. Uh, I can tell you that people are not working at ITU uh, uh, for the money. They're working to ITU for the vision and uh, because we all believe in wanting to better our, our students. So uh, the one thing I, I, I do now when I speak to uh, my students and our alumni is I, I say to you, uh, while you're at ITU, if you can appreciate that what you are getting is more uh, than you know, just what you're paying for. You're really getting the juice, uh, the wisdom of what that that instructor has uh, uh, to to uh, give you. Uh, and if you can appreciate what that means, uh, then uh, now I have an ask uh, to my students, and that is, uh, as you graduate, as you uh, go on out into life and with your career, um, take measure of what you have received here at ITU, uh, honor it and uh, be sure to give back. Um, you know, be a good person, you know, for to be kind of corny and uh, uh, make the world uh, a better place. Uh, and certainly uh, make sure you stay involved uh, with ITU, ITU culture and uh, contribute also perhaps to uh, the vision and mission that we have here. Um, okay. So that's that's uh, my uh, my my soapbox uh, soapbox speech. Uh, now I think uh, I will turn it back over to you, Bill, and I will be uh, around. So if you all have any questions at all, uh, I, I will be available uh, until you guys are exhausted from your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys are precious to us. Uh, you, our students, you are why we are here. Well, we're here to serve you and we're here to uh, give you the best schooling uh, that we possibly can. Um, so uh, uh, have, a, uh, have a great time, enjoy yourselves and um, uh, yeah, look up. Thank you. Thank you, President Chan. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that everyone learned a little more about ITU and also about uh, ITU's history. So thank you again, President Chan. Um, so now, before we move on to our next session, we'd really like to get a virtual selfie of everyone. So if you don't mind, turn on your cameras for us so we can get this. Um, and we're going to do just that big old Zoom smile. And our uh, digital photographer, Grace, is going to take a picture of each one of the Zoom pages. So Grace, I'm going to turn this over to you. 
Yes, if you uh, let's just wait for everybody for the cameras to be on. Okay. Um, be here. Okay, hold on. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more minutes. Okay. Okay. Let's let's um, one, two, three. Okay. Um, next page. One. Two, three. Okay. Thank you. Back to you, Bill. Okay. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, everyone, for doing that. You can turn on if you want. You can turn your cameras off. Um, so now we're going to move on to our live Q and A session. But before we do that, I just want to make a couple of housekeeping announcements regarding registration and your account logins. Um, due to our current website migration, not all of the dates are available on my itu.edu, so please refer to our website for the most recent updated information regarding your course schedules. And if you're having difficulty logging into my itu.edu account, please send a, send a request ticket via Freshdesk. Um, one of our moderators will put the link for the Freshdesk um, ticket in our chat. Um, and lastly, we want to ask all of you to please make sure to view your registered courses on your EMS accounts. If for any reason your courses are not available, please send a fresh desk ticket to the registrar's office. And at this point right now, our orientation is officially over for those of you that have commitments today and need to leave us. But those of you who are able to, we invite you with your questions to stay longer. We will do a Q&A, and after our Q&A, we will have an open forum discussion with our president, Yao, Ch Yao Jin Chan, just like he said. You will love talking to him. He wants to get to know you. You see how wonderful he is. So moving on to our Q&A, I want to remind you just to keep your questions general, and if you have any questions that are personal or individual, send them to orientation at itu.edu, and we will take care of it. We will get back to you. So for our Q&A, we have joining us today, various representatives from our academics and our students, uh, student support departments. We have Newton from admissions. We have Kent from ISO. We have Evelyn from the registrar's office. And we have Dr. Conchi from the advising, from student advising to answer your questions. So if you have any questions, raise your hand in the Zoom function. We'll, we'll, give you the, we'll give you the floor, and if you want, you can put it in the chat, and then I will make sure that the moderators, um, that we get this question answered. Okay, I'm going to turn this over. Okay, uh, uh, Bill. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before we, uh, yeah, before we go on, um, I, I uh, uh, realized that uh, we had a, a bit of a gap of uh, some content that uh, we really wanted to get out there. Uh, and that is uh, that uh, uh, George, uh, Dr. George Chanos, uh, who uh, has been uh, a recent uh, addition to uh, ITU, but uh, it seems like uh, we've been working together uh, for decades already, uh, is uh, heading up our systems uh, engineering uh, department. And uh, 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 this is an evolution from our electrical and computer engineering uh, uh, majors uh, into systems engineering, and, and Dr. Tanos can uh, explain why. And then also, uh, uh, Dr. Tanos, in conjunction uh, with uh, our other um, uh, adjunct uh, instructors, uh, will will be uh, leading up a new uh, center for entrepreneurship and innovation. And so, uh, Dr. Tanos, if, if you don't mind, uh, would you please say a, a few words? Can so, you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. They can. All right. All right. Uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, for the students for joining us. Uh, welcome to ITU. We are very happy and uh, proud to have you with us. Uh, first, I want to mention a little bit about uh, the speech or the the the, the words that uh, the President uh, Yao has uh, given us. As you could tell, and I'm sure you can. Uh, the uh, genuine nature of uh, our president, which creates an environment that's unique to ITU. And I consider myself lucky to be part of this organization. 
and I know you guys are gonna find out that you are special because you're part of this organization uh, that provides not only the education required, the technical knowledge, but also the professional knowledge, the, the, the social knowledge, and also the um, atmosphere which really enhances uh, your self-confidence. And once you graduate from ITU, uh, you would be one of the uh, people who are well prepared to enter either the workforce or to start your own company or to do whatever you desire uh, in the future. So speaking of that, uh, President Yao just initiated a, a wonderful program and a center. Uh, the program it is all connected and is all interconnected. It's a systems engineering program. So in, in, uh, in our thoughts, engineering is, a, is one unit. As an engineer, you should be able to understand all the principles of all engineers and they're all interconnected. Uh, whether it's electrical, whether it's software, whether it's uh, mechanical, or it's chemical engineering, they're all follow the same principles. And in order to have a comprehensive understanding, be able to lead as an engineer, uh, a group of engineers as you leave uh, this institution, systems engineering become very, very important uh, in this aspect. Since we already do have a lot of the engineering disciplines, we're creating a system engineering program, which uh, basically equip, uh, gives you the tool. So when you graduate from ITU uh, to become the leader of an engineering in the industry. The, the other aspect that's also connected to it is we just uh, created a center for entrepreneurship and innovations. For those students who, um, uh, because you know different personalities, they have different uh, desires and approach on life. A lot of students would like to become their own um, boss and create and then, and then uh, be innovative and uh, uh, maybe become the next Elon Musk or the next Bill Gates in the future. For those, we offer a, a wonderful, wonderful opportunity through the Capstone Project, which uh, Professor Yao talked about. Also, uh, the Center of Entrepreneurship and Entrepreneurship and uh, Innovation, which eventually will create an incubator for a startup company. So imagine that we have, we give you the tool uh, to understand how businesses work, how you start business, we'll give you the tool and the technology to be able to be creative. And also we would help you as you graduate from here to start your own company, have ITU be your office for this new company. Uh, and then also you have a, a, a set of advisors who are the leaders in the technology in the world or your faculty, all the administrations that we have here at ITU, uh, uh, who basically are the, the leaders in different technologies uh, in the Silicon Valley. So this is an environment that nobody would ever find anywhere else. It's a, 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 you guys are very lucky to be here. We're lucky to have you. And please contact me at any time for any questions or any help that we could do. Uh, one piece of advice that I advise from four years ago to now all my students and in, in, every, in every place that I taught at, please, please ask questions. Always ask, always challenge your professors, ask them questions and have the class, not a lecture class, but a discussion class. And that's how you get the most benefit out of all your classes. Contact your professors. We all have our cell phone numbers listed for you guys to contact, and, uh, to contact us at any time. We don't have office hours. Our office hours are open every day uh, for, uh, for you, even at night, even in the evenings, even in the weekend, I, I, we realize that a lot of our students are, have internship. They work during the day. So we make ourselves available, uh, all odd hours of the day and the night.
and welcome to ITU. And if you have any questions, I'll stick around after during the question session and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tanos. Thank you, President Chan. So circling back now, we have, we're gonna start our Q&A. Um, and again, we have the representatives from our academic and support departments with Newton from admissions, Kent from ISO, Evelyn from the Registrar's Office and Dr. Conchi from advising. Um, so if you have any questions, please raise your hand in the Zoom function and our moderator will unmute you or you can just put them in the chat box. So we would like to open it up now for questions. Quiet group. So let's do this. Let's move into our just open discussion forum with President Chan and Dr. Tanos and anyone else that's here. Uh, that would like to just join in. I think President Chan will be very open to hearing anything that you want to talk about. I have a question. How, yes, how can I turn this raise raise a hand function? Can I ask oh, a question? Go ahead, Dimitro. Uh -huh, okay. I want to ask about internship. Um, so as I understand, as I understood, I understood after the first semester, uh, it is possible to find a full-time job offer. Is it right? Uh, what else should I do? Like, what is the requirements? Uh, hi, so this is Conti. Um, hi, Dimitri. This is Conti. Um, I think I have been talking to you about the internship. So, yes or no, in your first trimester, you are allowed to do a part time internship. If you want to do a full time internship, there are some requirements you need to meet. And as I mentioned in my emails, there are three documents we need. Uh, the offer letter, the internship request, and the cooperative agreement. No, no, no. I didn't. And we, no. I can, um, all of that information is on the internship page. So if you go to the general website, itu.edu, and in the search, you just type internship, uh, it will send you to the internship page where you can find all the forms and all the information, but you can always email me at internship at itu.edu. Mm -hmm. Okay, and all this I can I can get like from uh, employer, right? Excuse me? All these things, like all these three uh, requirements I could get from uh, the employer, right? Yes, of course. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Let me, let's look in the chat box. There is a question in the chat box. It says, where can we access the course information slash syllabus after adding the courses in my itu.edu? Um, so this is Conchi again. Um, so uh, there is a few things. You can find all the course descriptions and requirements and prerequisites for classes in the student handbook, uh, which you got when you got admitted. If you go to my itu.edu and you add the courses, um, you know, you cannot actually see much there. Once you pay for the courses and you are fully enrolling these courses, you go to the EMS, uh, our proprietary system. And in the EMS, uh, when uh, you click on each of the classes, you can see the syllabus and you know um, if the professors are being quick you know right now you should be able to also see course resources you will see announcements uh, but um, hopefully all the professors are working right now in uploading those things in the EMS uh, but you will not be able to see them in my it2.edu if right now you just want information on the classes uh, you can Find it in the handbook. If you have a specific questions, you can email me at advising at itu.edu. Thank you, Dr. Conchi. Anyone else? Anything else in the chat? There's nothing, but you can put it in the chat box. Raise your hand. This is the time to get your questions answered to the people here. Okay. President Chan, would you like to say a few words? Well, uh, one thing is uh, uh, I, I don't know if. Uh, E either uh, George or Mamoon want to say anything about the capstone uh, projects. Um, you know, yeah. as the students have heard, uh, we uh, have have just launched in its nascency uh, the Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why we've done this is we've we've seen 
uh, that our students with the correct mentor uh, mentorship have been able to create uh, very viable uh, projects that could uh, uh, very easily spin off. And I, I do believe we have some student groups who are pursuing now uh, spinoffs from the capstone. Uh, so we decided that we're going to just put uh, more support, more infrastructure at ITU to uh, support those, those efforts and those competencies that we see in our students that have combined so well together. Uh, so uh, I don't know if uh, uh, Mamoun, uh, you know, if you want to or George wants to talk uh, about uh, that some more. Uh, and if, if so, though, the one thing I, I will say just to give uh, students uh, some uh, knowledge of, of what this is all about. You know, I, I've been in uh, the educational space for uh, many, many years. Uh, I, 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 I uh, graduated with my uh, graduate degree um, in 1994. And right away, I went into a job at USC, uh, uh, being uh, one of the founding members of their Integrated Media System Center, which is basically their multimedia center at USC. Uh, and so I was working uh, with uh, graduate uh, students in project learning uh, uh, since that time in 1994, uh, basically when ITU was founded by my dad too, the same year. And uh, what I can tell you is that uh, inside of the educational space, uh, most all educators, even innovative educators, uh, will, will tell you that it's a, a futile effort to utilize uh, student uh, work, student um, uh, competencies to actually get real world projects done. There's a lot of barriers to it. You know, the students are not paid, you know, therefore they're not as committed. They're doing it for academics. They're not doing it because they could get fired from the career. Uh, uh, they don't, uh, they may have other um, uh, uh, interests. They have other uh, things that pull them away from it. N not the same commitment level, all of these, these things. Um, and so you, you e even the people with the best heart who have tried to make educational models that utilize uh, students to actually get projects done. Uh, and, and I've been a part of these, these, uh, 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 these attempts uh, at, uh, at USC uh, and at other uh, top uh, universities in, in Hong Kong Polytechnic. I, I, I was part of programs. So uh, generally it's uh, pretty ubiquitously um, uh, accepted that uh, student work just isn't up to snuff. Um, however, uh, what we saw, what I experienced when uh, Dr. Mamoun Samaha, Mamoun is here today, uh, started taking over the capstones at ITU, uh, the level of work product that uh, we were able to see coming out from uh, Mamoun's led capstones, student-led capstones, was just phenomenal. And, uh, uh, and I sat into some of these capstone uh, courses because I wanted to see why. I wanted to see how Mamoun was pulling out such expertise, such um, uh, amazing uh, work product out of the students. And uh, I, I, what I observed was uh, very masterful uh, from uh, Dr. Samaha is uh, just to give our students uh, some semblance of the people that they, they will be working with here at ITU. Before Mamoun uh, even came into ITU uh, because he, he, he just wanted to get his PhD, he already was the CTO of uh, one of the top uh, technology uh, uh, companies in the Silicon Valley for Motorola. And he headed up uh, the mobile uh, device platform uh, for Motorola. And uh, so he already had a very steep and uh, sophisticated uh, knowledge set uh, uh, in the technology, but also uh, being a CTO of a top uh, uh, Silicon Valley firm, he also had connections and he uh, knew the technologies uh, from, 
from a, a very broad level and also very deep level. Um, so when I saw Mamoon working with students, he, he was able to guide students very efficiently, just like one, one or two comments to say, okay, where you guys are going is, uh, it, it, that, that's, that's not gonna work, okay? What you should try is uh, look at this company's website, this company's website. You know, they, they are uh, headed towards an IP, uh, IPO. People don't know about them yet, but uh, I believe that this technology is going to replace uh, Cisco in the future, that kind of thing. And then he, he was able to uh, uh, very quickly uh, and very efficiently just uh, ratchet up uh, the student's knowledge level of what's going on in the industry and how to creatively put things together uh, because they, they were led and mentored well, uh, such that what they came out with was, was uh, just it, it, it was breathtaking. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I would have said at that time uh, that uh, Mamoon is the only person I know who could do that until Mamoon introduced us to Dr. Tanos. And uh, then uh, now we have two people who in, in my lifetime in education, uh, I, I would say uh, it, it's rare to find the kind of leadership that you guys are going to experience in your capstones and in your courses if you're lucky enough to I take from these two gentlemen and, and anything you take at ITU. Uh, but, but okay, with that introduction, uh, I'm going to turn it over, uh, uh, maybe Mamoon, if you don't mind, uh, to say a few words. Uh, I think the students would really benefit. Thank you, thank you, uh, Yao. Uh, when, when you graduate, uh, uh, we want you to be very, very proud of your accomplishment. Uh, when I went to HP, I said to one manager, hey, I'm looking for a job. I'm, I'm young and I'm looking for a job. He asked me, what is your accomplishment with your masters? I didn't know what to tell him. And I, I learned that the work and the project I do, it affects me so much. So I make my, my student, once you graduate, you are so proud of something. So when we, uh, for example, uh, when we give our student a project, we need you to work on the security of Zoom. Why Zoom is, is being criticized by Microsoft, by other uh, companies. So when we did security on Zoom as a capstone project, we had about 90 attendees, including CTOs. So we try, um, we try to make your project special. It's something you are very, very proud talking about it. It is up to speed. Uh, uh, also, one thing uh, exactly what uh, Dr. Tanu said, don't be afraid to say your opinion. I said the uh, Google glasses, I said it to Larry Page and his CTO, this is not going to work. And I wrote it in Facebook. I'm not worried because uh, Larry Page is the CTO for Google. I'm going to say my what I believe. Uh, I said in front, in front of analysts, um, Blackberry will be dead. No, you know, everybody thought I'm, I'm crazy. So you need to say what you feel about the future, your opinion, ask questions and, um, you know, just, just uh, be open for new ideas. Working the current situation, like your classes, of course you want to get a job with HTML, front end, back end, all the stuff but be open to mobility, the future between mobility and the cloud. Uh, you need to be open for, uh, to blockchain. Even if you have a nugget in the blockchain, that will be very, very helpful. So in, in Capstones, when you graduate, I guarantee you, you are gonna be very, very proud. And if somebody asks you, what is your accomplishment? You will be talking about it. At least you have something dead end to end and um, I'm very proud of that. And, and uh, that's on the capstone. And on the, another thing to watch out um, that we are an open door, uh, Dr. Tanus, myself, uh, the president, you don't get this in any university. I, I guarantee you a famous professor teaching AI course, 
he comes, handed it to his assistants and never show up. So if you get here AI uh, in the system engineering or in the software uh, or in the business side, you are gonna get it from the top in, uh, professors. You are not gonna get assistance to do that. Mobility, you are gonna, I've been 20 years doing mobility and that's the future. Uh, phones, uh, IOT, all this stuff. You are gonna be up to speed on those, uh, in those courses. But in one condition, we need you to attend the courses, please. Attendance is important and following up with the, with the professors. Grading is not something to study for. Grading, you will get it when you enjoy the course and you attend the course and participate. The grading is the last thing to worry about. Worry about what are you learning and how it relates to the, uh, to the outside side world. And, uh, and we need you also, I think Dr. Tanus mentioned it, uh, you are doing a database course, for example. Don't be afraid to say, well, we know this, uh, I, need to, I need to do graph database. So always the teachers will give you, for example, in my course, in my syllabus, I put 30 points for a project. So if a student is very advanced, you give him the course to work on advanced topic and to reward him with 30 points. We're not gonna give you, we are not gonna leave you on the level of the beginners because our course normally it will span uh, beginners and advanced. Make it clear to the professor, I'm advanced, I know SQL, I know SQL, I know SQL. Please, can you give me more advanced stuff? Own the course, this is about you, it's not about the professor or the university, we, we care about you and make sure you are challenged. That's what I can say. Uh, Dr. Tanus, you wanna say something? Yeah, I'll say a couple of words about uh, the capstone project. This is, and, and I, I'll just go uh, through the beginning of the course. It really, you meet with your professor and all the students are, haven't picked their project yet. We have several projects that are actually very uh, practical projects. And a lot of them are actually industry uh, related projects. So what we do, already you have a set of uh, ideas to pick from, but sometimes you, uh, which is I prefer, if you have your own idea that you always wanted to do, but you didn't know how to do it. So you bring it up, we discuss it, you come up with two, three ideas and you pick one from it. We form the groups from various disciplines because at every engineering project in industry or you need to have people from different disciplines in order to complete the team. So, and then, and then there we talk about systems engineering. So you, you've got the whole uh, team that's qualified to do. You have the CFO, you've got the CTO, you've got the CEO, and that's how you do the project. You project as a company. So you're starting a new company sometimes, and you do the financials, you have to do the goals, the missions. We go through it like you are starting a company and starting a, a new product. You design, you do, do your research first, then you design it, you develop it. And a lot of the times, and in the future also, we're gonna have a lot more uh, people from uh, the industry, the high-tech industry participation. So your mentor could be the CTO of a, a big company. Your mentor could be from Google or your mentor could be from Intel. So. This is gonna be um, it's added a huge added value to your project. And your project could be also, as soon as you're done, most of them could be commercialized. So you will see a product that you created in college becoming a very, very uh, uh, powerful uh, product in the future. So some of the comments that my students, our students um, have about this, he says, when we started this, we had no clue how startup company start. And, and then after they graduate, they know every element of business plan. What do you need to do in order to get investments from um, uh, VCs? Uh, what do you need to do in order to uh, start a company? You could bootstrap the company. 
Um, they know about uh, funding. They know about uh, seed money, angel investors. They know about, um, you know, VC rounds. You could just get uh, so so. This is a, a just a very valuable experience uh, for the students, and also it's a pleasure because one of the things that I've noticed that, you know, we're 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 went through life, we have a lot of experience, we started from somewhere, but there is no sharper mind than the young mind. And you guys are the young mind. Be confident in yourself. Please don't be afraid to dream because whatever you could dream, you could accomplish. And we try to give you the tools and the experience. So we've made our mistakes. We're very experienced and we know better because we made a lot of mistakes in our lives. So what we try to do, we try to help the students accomplish uh, their, their goals much faster by avoiding some of the mistakes that we have made uh, in, in our industry, in our startup companies, in our uh, corporate world. So, and then some students and some groups are, not interested in, in uh, starting a company for financial gains. And that's very admirable. A lot of the students are interested in starting a nonprofit organizations to help humanity in general, to help the global world, to have, help uh, 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 eliminate or reduce poverty. And we've got some of those projects also for uh, public, uh, public health projects, uh, public wealth projects. Uh, that students are more interested in it. So it's very exciting class and, and really very educational. And uh, it prepares you well for whatever you wanna do in the future. Again, it prepares you for corporate world. It prepares you to become your, uh, you start your own company and it prepares you to become a better human uh, because it gives you comprehensive understanding of various type of organizations and, and what they do and how you could benefit the whole world. And you know, whenever, if, whatever uh, interest you have, please don't, don't be, I know it's early, you're just starting, but don't be shy to call us and ask some questions. You could start thinking about it right now uh, before you start. And then, uh, and then uh, maybe you start developing it before you get to that class if you have something that you're very interested in. And if you wanna learn about the projects that we have done in the past, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. As I said, you've got a, you could just send it to any email at uh, ITU, ask for my cell phone number or Professor Mamoun's cell phone number, even President Yao's cell phone numbers, we're all available to answer all your questions. Thank you very much. And thanks for, uh, Bill, thank you for the time. Uh, and the opportunity to uh, speak to the students. I uh, I want to make one comment on the being just a why we are telling you about capstone and while you are just starting the the master degree go very fast. Uh, believe me, between you enter, you are graduating. At the end of every term, go and listen to your colleagues when they are graduating. If you are just listening how they are presenting their final. Dr. George and me, we will invite you. Just try to attend one or two projects so you learn more and uh, how they, uh, their, you know, their projects has been uh, done. This way, when it is your turn to do it, you already have an idea how to do it. So just uh, try to listen to your colleagues, try to learn from them. Thank you. It's uh, amazing, you know, uh... For me, just sitting here listening to uh, George and Mamoun, I, I, I want to enroll myself. I, <laughs> I feel, uh, you know, you students, you're, you're so fortunate uh, to be uh, here at ITU and uh, being uh, taught by these, this quality of uh, person with the kind of experience level they have at the depth and with the kind of heart that they, uh, they, they uh, fully invest of themselves into your, your, uh, your learning uh, environment. Okay, well, uh, let's, let's see now, are there any other questions? Like I said, you know, we, we, we want to hear from you guys and any, 
any questions, concerns, comments, uh, it's uh, we're open. Uh, and if not, then uh, you know, of course, we uh, will we'll let you guys uh, get back to your own lives. Uh, are there any questions? And I think you know, uh, it, it just go ahead and turn on your microphones and your uh, cameras if you if you would like, and just go ahead and uh, throw out any questions if you have them. You don't have to. Uh, I don't see that there are so many questions that you need to type them out. So we can just do it informally. So if there's anybody. Is a, a good time, uh, and then you know we'll wait a a minute or two, and if there's nobody else, then uh, you guys can uh, go get lunch. <laughs> yes, okay. and and uh, in my in uh, in the computer science uh, in my class, uh, there were amazing people. If you guys like to introduce yourself, go ahead. I was impressed with your uh, backgrounds, so introduce and. Uh, you don't have to ask questions. Whatever you want, it's open, open mic. Right, so if there are any, uh, you know, uh, current students, meaning uh, not new students, but current students who uh, would be willing to uh, talk about your experience at ITU, uh, you know, good or bad, uh, you know, we're, we're open. So uh, please, uh, if you're willing to step up and say a few words, we're, uh, we're all ears. Um, excuse me, may I ask a question about insurance? So I bought insurance with uh, insurance agent and um, all requirements met. And I submitted it to gbsbean.com and I got uh, uh, replied that my insurance is denied. Like it's, it could be waived. waived. So, um, so it's like... Uh, important to buy GCB insurance or I can use my own insurance? Um, I think that's, uh, Dimitro, that's more about the type of coverage that is expected for all international students. So that could be the reason why uh, JCB uh, denied the insurance waiver that you were requesting. My suggestion would be that you speak with our accounting office. Uh, the accounting office is available on bursar at itu.edu. B U R S A R at it.edu. I'll put that on the chat as well so that mm -hmm. uh, you have that available for you. Uh, but in general, JCB is only our administrator of insurance. They are not. Uh, they they are not the ones that you are buying the insurance from. So in any case, I think the bursar will be able to answer your questions better. Yeah, and I already sent my mail to account email. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Dimitro. I'll put that on the link again. Anyone okay. else? Yeah, anyone else? Please, uh, we'll we'll give it another uh, maybe minute, and then uh, now's the time. Uh, hi, I'm Queenie. So I just have one question, quick question. So I wanted to ask if the um, class schedule is available for the next trimester, so that I can, you know, maybe better plan my schedule, so I don't miss out any class that I would like to take, but you know, might not be available in the next trimester, so. Absolutely. Um, actually, this is a great question. We love the enthusiasm. Uh, I think the fact that you're asking about the next uh, next trimester already is fantastic. Um, at the moment, we are still in the process of uh, getting, uh, you know, the availability of faculty and also, you know, what classes can be offered and things like that. Uh, however, um, as a general suggestion, uh, if I may, uh, the yeah classes, uh, you know, maybe you take a couple of core classes and take some electives because the electives may come uh, come by maybe the next year or two terms later and stuff like that. So if there's an elective that you really, really like to take, do take that elective. Um, I noticed that you're in the business administration uh, department. Um, so in your case, I think uh, that you have to take uh, MGT 503 in your first term. So enroll in that and uh, see uh, which other electives that you might want to take. Um, so that would just be my suggestion, but uh, otherwise uh, the class schedule for the next term will be available sometime during the middle of the current term, uh, in the middle of the summer term. All right, awesome, thank you. No problem. You could do is uh, is review last year's uh, uh, courses, and there will be some changes, but it won't be a lot of the changes. So you, it gives you an idea what kind of courses are offered in the fall, okay. and in general. So that that would give you a little guidance to what you need to do. Awesome. Next. Thank you. Thank you for the advice. Okay. Anyone else? We have some wonderful people here to answer any questions that you have. 
Hey, I'm sorry. And last question from me. Uh, do you have like um, approximate, approximately expectation for the next trimester? It will be online, like remote, or it will be some classes like in person? Um, at present, uh, we are expecting to do the fall term uh, virtually. Um, so that means it will be the same as the summer. Uh, for the spring term next year, uh, we will be revisiting, uh, you know, how we would want to do the classes as well. Thank you. No problem, Dimitra. Um, hi, I have a question. Uh, I typed it in the chat, but it's still not clear. Uh, my name is Summer. Uh, so for me, it's like, if I log into EMS, I can see all my courses. I mean, is there a way to see only my courses somehow in a calendar view so that I can plan my time? Because for now I have to access each course separately and then look and then add them to my calendar manually. I is there anything? Um, not that I am aware of, but I don't know. We, I think we have Dr. Mamoon here. Uh, Dr. Mamoon, do you know of any way that that can be done? Not at the moment, but that's a good requirement. So it is in uh, Newton's <laughs> place. I actually have that already. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we, at the moment, uh, we don't have that. I'm sorry. But uh, with this uh, EMS system is in the works. Uh, we are working on it day and night to make it uh, more friendly. Sorry about that. Thank you. It's a good, good idea for us to improve on the systems. Uh, good suggestion. I think uh, it's going to be very helpful for us. Thank you. Yeah. And it's not difficult to do. It is just a matter of priorities. We, we, uh, we will look into it right away. Uh, hi, I have a question related to the next quarters as well. Actually, it's more about the end of year uh, break. If you usually have a date for the last day of December and come back on January, because I'm planning to go to my country to renew my visa. And I would like to know if do you usually have this break between yes, the end do. of the year? We definitely do. So our fall term uh, ends on December the 19th. Um, so if you if you want to plan accordingly and the following term that is spring 2022, I believe begins on January the 10th. Give me one second. Let me just confirm that date with you. Um, yes, it, it will be, begin January the 10th. So yes. December the 19th will be the last date of the fall term and January 10th, uh, 2022 will be the first day of the spring 2022 term. Great, thank you. You're very welcome. Anyone else? Thank you, Newton. Thank you, George. Thank you, Dr. George. Thank you, Dr. Mamoon. President Chan, you wanna say a few last words? Uh, I think that's uh, all on uh, our side. Um, if there are no more questions, I think you know we'll adjourn and uh, uh, go off to lunch. There uh, actually there is one, President Chan, there is one more question that just popped up in the chat box. Okay. It says, uh, between summer and fall semesters, can we continue interning or do we have to take a break? Um, you would have to take a break. Uh, you have to take a break. Uh, Newton, maybe you can answer this question. Um, sure. I, I was just saying exactly what Kanchi was saying as well. Um, it, unfortunately, it is required that you will have to take a break between the summer and the fall terms, actually, whenever there's a term break. Um, since internships are part of academic credit, uh, and it goes, it starts with the start of the term and it ends with the end of the term. So that is, um, that is kind of how it is being administered at ITU. So you will have to take a break um, between each term. I, I want to mention... Uh something for the new students. Uh, a lot of you already have a master's and have experience, especially in software. So if, if you are a programmer, I'd love to know you uh, because uh, we prefer the new students to give them a student jobs, uh, not graduating. So let us know what uh, skill set, your resume. I'd love to know uh, my students uh, more because we might have student jobs uh, for them. Uh, like uh, Ken and uh, the other team said, uh, you might get 20 hours of work. So please uh, let me know about your, if you have experience, uh, especially in software. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Mamoon. Okay, President Chan, I'll turn it over to you to 
say a final word and then we'll probably be done for today. Okay, yeah, I think I've uh, talked too much already, but um, uh, it, I think if we're uh, all done with the, and the students are uh, satisfied with uh, what they um, ha have uh, gotten here, uh, then, um, you know, uh, we're adjourning, we're graduate school, so I suggest you all go out, uh, have lunch and grab a cocktail. Okay, that's what we'll, we'll be doing here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of ITU. And uh, we will uh, we'll see you in, in your uh, first class uh, uh, in the next term. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye now.